Hey, how's it going today? Jeff Jarena here, and welcome to the Mental Plug Podcast. I hope yesterday's show, titled How to Rise Up and Win in Today's Challenging and Broken World, actually gave you a win in some way. I mean, let's face it here. Today's world, how we're living today from 2020 and now 2021, it is challenging. Um, and it is broken. But we know who takes care of all that. We know who heals all the wounds. We know who restores everything. That's Jesus Christ. But we still have to live in a world that's broken, that's fallen, and that is challenging. So how do we do that? Well, we have to apply what I was talking about yesterday, spiritual CPR. If you haven't checked out that episode, I would encourage you to listen to the previous episode. It's titled, How to Rise Up and Win in Today's Challenging and Broken World. Now, on today's episode, I want to go over one of my favorite verses and how you can apply that truth in your own life. I also want to roll out a new episode format. You're like, what? Something that will be a new addition to the existing Men Unplugged lineup. It's a new format where I need your help and input, and I think you're going to like it. At least that's my hope. I'm calling it Real Talk. Now, I'm going to go into the details after the main intro here, but for now, just know that this will give you a chance to be featured on a Men Unplugged episode. That's right. You're going to have a chance to be featured on a Men Unplugged episode. Now, before we dive into today's show, I want to remind you about my new book, Cut Through the Noise. It's now available on sale at menunplugged.net forward slash noise. That's N-O-I-S-E. Remember that when you order the book by February 28th, 2021, through that link, you're going to have a chance to win three free prizes, and one of which is a $50 gift card. You can find out more and pre-order your copy now at menunplugged.net forward slash noise. That's N-O-I-S-E. All right, let's cue the intro. So the big question is this, how do we as warriors of Jesus Christ, men of God who want to stay battle ready, who want to honor the Lord, and who want to grow in our daily walk, unplug from those things that weigh us down so we can ignite our faith, strengthen our family, and ultimately succeed in every aspect of life. That is the question, and this show will give you the answers. My name is Jeff Jarena, and welcome to Men Unplugged. Hey, welcome back to the program. Before I go over that verse on life application, I want to give you the details of the new Real Talk segment, okay? And I'm just going to say this up front. If you guys feel like this is helping you, it's, it's adding value to your life, then we'll continue to roll it out. You know, maybe we'll do something like once a month, something like that. I'm, I'm kind of just brainstorming here, but I feel like it has really has to have a good response and, and really provide that value that you guys are looking for that, that's going to give you some golden nugget of wisdom um, for that particular application, okay? Whatever the question that I'm going to ask you. So before I give you the question for this week that you would answer, I'm going to give you the link that you go to. So the link that you visit to participate in this, to actually have a chance to be featured on a Men Unplugged episode, you'll want to go to menunplugged.net forward slash life. That's L-I-F-E. Now, I will tell you a few things here. You want to make sure that you're recording um, you're recording the audio in a place with without a lot of noise, okay? If you've got kids around or something, Maybe you need to go into your car and you you access that link from your phone and you record there. It's actually a good good spot to record actually in a vehicle. Um, that is if the vehicle's off. Okay, so you go there, you're, you're recording it, and remember to keep this 90 seconds or less. And when you do that, make sure you put your name, and if you just want to put first name, that's okay, and your email address so I can send you a thank you for doing this. And then if you want, provide your um, city that you're in, state, country, whatever that is, whatever you want shared on that episode, please put that in there. Now, I may edit part of that episode if it's bad audio or something like that, but remember, it's only going to give you 90 seconds or less to record your audio, okay? And what you're going to want to do, here's the first question that you can actually provide your answer to by next week, okay, by January 30th, okay, because I'm going to have to have time to compile this. But here is the question, okay? The question is this, and you can answer both parts of the question or just one part. Here's the question. What has God taught you about yourself 
through all that happened in 2020 and what's happening right now in 2021? What has God taught you about yourself and or what have you learned about God? Okay. And if you have a scripture verse to share there, I would just encourage you to leave me with the reference passage, you know, the reference number, whatever that is. That way it's going to save you time from reading the whole verse. Okay. Then you're going to want to hit record. You save it. You're going to basically hit submit or send. I'm going to get that recording. And if the audio is good and I feel like it fits with the, with the question, then you have a chance of being on a Men Unplugged episode. Okay, I'll roll that in with maybe three to five others, maybe five to ten other um, answers from other individuals. And I think it's going to make a really cool show. Okay, again, that's menunplugged.net forward slash life. All right, so let me go over those two verses that I was talking about. Okay, and it's two verses that when you read them, you're like, yes, I love these because this is what I want. This is going to give me everything I want. This is exactly what I need. And then when you actually read them and you pray them and things don't happen, you don't get what you want, you start scratching your head, you start getting frustrated, realizing, wait a second, I thought this was supposed to give me what I wanted, but yet I'm not getting all that. It's not panning out the way I was thinking it was going to work. And so then you start to question, you start to doubt, and you start you start asking God, well, God, wait a second, I prayed this prayer, I said these verses, and yet nothing is working, okay? And so here it is, here's the acronym, A-S-K, ASK, okay? And it's from this passage, Matthew 7, verses 7 through 8. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. The one who seeks, finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Wow, it's like when you read those two verses right there, it's like you've got this, this genie in a bottle and you can just rub it. You can just say these, these verses and all of a sudden magically, and magically you're going to have everything you wish for. No, that's not the case. I mean, not for me anyway. And so then you're, you're left with the harsh reality of what does this actually mean? How is it implying my life every single day? Well, I don't want to go into a full theological breakdown here, but I do want to give you some quick life applications that um, I think will help to explain these two verses. It says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. See, I think what we need to do is we, we need to first understand that a lot of times we have to look at this from not our perspective, but from God's perspective. Number one, God wants the best for you, okay? He is your Abba Father, your Heavenly Father, and He wants to give you the best gifts, those gifts that are going to give you the best in your life. And a lot of times, what we think are best for us, God knows are not. Now, I don't know the full reasons for that. I don't know if that's, um, you know, the reasons for you are probably different for me, but I can just tell you from my personal life, it's been to... Um, to strengthen my faith, you know, when I don't get those things, it's it's also been to um, understand that I'm looking at things the wrong way, and I should stop depending on my flesh and stop leaning on man, depending on man in this world, and I should be relying on God. Okay, and maybe the same thing for you. And I'm just going to share a quick story here. That remember, if you've heard any other episode, I placed my faith in Jesus Christ 19 years ago. And it was a radical transformation. I was severely depressed. I had suicide thoughts for four years of my life. I I had this form of OCD called body dysmorphic disorder. And and if you've bought my book, Faith Without Fear, I talk more about that in the book. Now, I'm just going to share a little bit more here. And what happened was I placed my faith in Christ. And remember those four years I had had suicide thoughts. I was severely depressed, just basically no hope. And I would always focus on the scar on my hand. I mean, it just, it, it was crazy. It was from a car wreck that I had, I, I flipped my car and it, and it skid on the road, like probably what, 50 to hundred feet. I don't know exactly, but somewhere around there. And I had this m- massive scar on my hand. And that was what the enemy used to tell me or make me think that I was an ugly duckling, that I didn't matter, that God didn't love me, that no one could ever love me, that I wasn't important. Okay. And so I got depressed, right. And had these suicide thoughts and 
then I placed my faith in Christ and it was like, bam, 180 degrees running the right way. But here's the thing. I still had my old sin nature, my old thought patterns where I was still thinking that that scar mattered, how I looked mattered. Now you could say it was vanity, but it really was um, this, this flaw in the way that I was thinking, the way that I, what I thought really mattered, right? It was a spiritual battle that I was still dealing with. Okay. So I would still focus on that scar. I still felt bad at times. Okay. Even though I had this new hope in Jesus Christ. So I would pray all the time. I kept praying and praying and praying and praying. I mean, I did this for about two years. Okay. I prayed that God would remove that scar. That's what I prayed for. And I kept getting back this answer. My grace is sufficient. Your scar doesn't matter. And I'm going to be honest with you, for those two years, I did not like that answer. Because to me, the genie in the bottle that I wanted was for God to miraculously remove every trace of that scar. Okay? And he didn't. But here's what happened. Here's the most amazing thing that happened. As I continued to ask God in prayer, as I continued to seek Him, seek His will, His guidance, and I continued to knock on that door, God's gate, as I continued to knock on it, here's what happened. When I see my hand now, I don't see that scar. I don't even see it at all. I mean, it's like it was never there. It's because now I'm seeing myself the way that Jesus sees me as his child. And that, my friend, is the asking, the seeking, and the knocking that God is talking about right here in Matthew 7, 7 through 8, that you don't give up. You don't relent because God has the best for you and his best is better than your best. You know, I think about it. I'm sorry for choking up there, man. But I, I, I think about this as a father now with two kids. My daughter and my son, they will ask me for things, you know? And, and if you are a parent, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, I'm not, I'm not talking about just good stuff. You're like, hey, we need some food. Yeah, I get that, you know? I'm talking about you just gave them five cookies and they come to you and they ask for a big lollipop and you're like, wait a second, you just had a bunch of sugar. I'm not going to give that to you right now. And they continue to ask. I mean, it's like they get upset when you tell them no, because they're like, wait a second, there was no option for no. How can you roll out no when I'm like, for sure, you're going to tell me yes. So they keep asking and asking and asking. They don't give up. They're persistent. And finally, you break down. And you're like, okay, I'm going to give you this lollipop just once. And they get that smile on their face. Now they know that, you know what? I can come back and I do this again, and I may be able to get something. But here's what your son or daughter has learned. That you are there for them. That you care for them. And you're going to do all that you can to give them what they need. So that's what God is doing. When you continue to ask and seek and knock and come to him in prayer, God is saying, my child right there knows that I love them. And I know that they love me because they keep coming back to me. It's this communication, this relationship. You know, James 4, 8 says, draw near to him and he will draw near to you. We have to have some proactive steps here. We have to take some proactive steps to draw closer to God. And so I will close it with this, that we have to examine the context, right? What is it that God is telling us here? Looking at it from his perspective and then understanding that as a child, we cannot relent. We have to continually persist. You know, it says to pray without ceasing. 
We may not always get what we pray for, but yet it, we have to continually pray because you never know. You actually might. And here's the other condition. We have to remember that this promise here of asking and uh, receiving and then seeking and finding and the knocking and the door will be open. We have to remember that when we're doing those things, that it must be good. It must be in God's timing and it must be in his will because he wants to give you all the good and advantageous gifts because you're his child. And how I know that, how I know he wants the best for you, it's right here. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. Whoever believes in him shall never perish, but have eternal life with him. And Luke 19, 10. Jesus says he came to seek and save that which was lost. He came to seek and save you, my friend. That's how much he loves you. And that's how much we know that he wants the best for us because that's what he did. All right, as I wrap up this episode, I want to give you those two calls to action. First call to action is this. If you want to be featured on a Men Unplugged episode on part of this new Men Unplugged segment called Real Talk, then go to menunplugged.net forward slash life and provide your answer, the audio answer to this question. Remember, it has to be 90 seconds or less. What has God taught you about yourself from 2020 and or including 2021? And or what have you learned about God for that whole time? That's the question. Answer that question. And then remember to go to menunplugged.net forward slash noise to pre-order my new book, Cut Through the Noise. And when you do that by February 28th, 2021, you're going to have a chance to win three prizes, one of which is a $50 gift card. Until next time, stay plugged in and recharged. God bless. Thanks for listening. We hope you enjoyed this episode. There's plenty more to see at menunplugged.net, including key resources and ways to engage with Jeff in his training and speaking forums. While there, don't forget to subscribe and receive a free gift. We look forward to you joining us next time here on the Men Unplugged Show. Unplugged.